If you have a directional antenna and you can rotate it, one of the first questions you're likely to ask is, have I got it pointed where I want it? Now, while it's true that almost every rotator control has some kind of north-south, east-west indicator, I found it still left me guessing and wanting something a little more intuitive to use. Also, because I'm cheap, cost was important. So, for less than $10, here's my attempt to get a better way to present where your antenna is pointed. So, what just happened here? First, using a standard unmodified TV controller, we initiated a change in the antenna's position. And then, using Google Earth, we watched in real time the antenna's heading change. We saw that Google Earth displayed both a line and a numerical heading, which agreed closely with the original controller's setting. Okay, I followed that, but what did it take to make it happen? Well, the short answer is some hardware and some software. Let's start by looking at the hardware side. Starting at the controller and working toward the computer, there's a three conductor cable that's connected parallel to the rotor's antenna cable. The other end of this cable terminates on a homemade interface board. At the output of the interface board, there's another three conductor run that terminates on an Adreno SS micro. The micro's USB connector completes the link to the computer, and that's it. The micro sells for about four dollars, and there's a couple of dollars worth of parts in the interface board. So, that's why I'm saying this project can be completed for under ten dollars. Now, on the software side, there are three pieces of code, each written in a different language. They are an Adreno sketch. On the Google Earth side, there is a KML file, a variant of HTML. And then, in the middle, there is a Python file that runs as a server app. It glues the other two together. Now, on my computer, I'm running Windows 10, so to get the Python code to run as a server application, I also installed WAMP Server 3.0.6 and configured it to support calls to Python file types. Microsoft has something called IIS, which might also work, but not knowing anything about either one, I found the WAMP server software easier to sort out and get going. Now, the intent of this video is to present just the general concepts exploited in this animated GUI. But if you'd like to know more about how Google Earth interacts with KML files, here's where I started. For this application, the KML file will, once a second, ask the Python program what's going on. And the neat thing is, if Python answers back with a KML formatted reply, Google Earth will execute the response like it was part of the original KML file and refresh the Earth's view accordingly. Now, what happens on the Python side is each time it's launched, in this case once per second, it goes out via a predefined serial link and effectively indicates it's ready to receive the current heading. In this case, the micro adreno passes back an integer value between 0 and 359. The Python code takes this value and using the antenna's location calculates the line's far end coordinates, then wraps the results in a KML formatted string which, as stated earlier, Google Earth will update its view to match what was just sent. Okay, that describes how the GUI gets refreshed, 
But how does the Adrena derive the heading value? Basically the same way the controller box does. And that is the controller has a synchronous clockwork movement that rotates in step with the synchronous gear works mounted in the mast rotor box. But instead of being mechanical, the Adrena's is digital. To explain this further, with each AC cycle applied to the mass motor, the antenna's heading is changed by a predictable amount. The homemade interface sees this same AC voltage and converts it to a 5 volt pulse train that the Adreno can monitor and count. And just like its mechanical counterpart mounted in the control box, with each pulse detected, the Adreno increments or decrements a digital accumulator by the same proportional amount. Now, in the original controller, the clockwork's direction is determined by the phase shift between the two AC signals. Because the Adreno also sees this phase shift in the digital pulse streams, it knows whether the accumulator increments whether the pulse increments or decrements the accumulator. So, for all practical purposes, the two systems report the same heading. Now, just to demonstrate that the Google View stays in sync, I'll initiate a couple of more position changes and attempt to show the results. The change to a 210 degree heading returned very favorable results. Now, let's go for a 270 degree heading. This looks to be off by 3 degrees, but is it really? One way to test is to move to another heading, say 40 degrees, and see what we get. Well, that completes this presentation. My apologies for the poor quality video, but I hope you found some of the techniques discussed here of value, and at some point make use of these concepts in something you use yourself. And as always, good luck with your next project.